Hi, this is Phil from Simply Rhino, and in this video, we're going to take a look at creating and controlling transitional surfaces. The transitional surface in this example is this blended section between the body side and the outer edge of the wheel arch. And when we create a surface like this, we're generally interested in not only controlling the shape of this surface and this shape may change as the cross section moves from end to end of the wheel arch but we're also looking at controlling the matching at either side of the new surface so that we can produce an end result where we have a seamless match and a shape that we are fully in control of. Before we look at ways of creating the transitional surface, let's first take a look at the ways in which continuity is both expressed and evaluated inside of Rhino. The simplest type of continuity is G0 or positional continuity. This simply states that the edges of our new surface highlighted here will be within the absolute modeling tolerance of the edges of the existing surfaces so that we should be able to join these into a watertight condition. If we want to check for a watertight join, uh, we can first join the surfaces together, highlight them, go to our analysis tools, edge tools and show edges. If we only select naked edges and choose a nice bright color, for example yellow here, then the absence of any yellow along our edges here shows us that they are joined within a watertight condition. If we have a look at this surface with an environment map we'll see that beyond the joined edges there's no further geometric continuity so we see a very noticeable edge here. Where we want to check for conditions like this where we only have positional continuity we can use the zebra tools analyze surface and zebra and where the zebra stripes uh, don't run into each other like this, then uh, this shows us that we have at best a G0 positional continuity. The next step up from positional G0 continuity is G1 tangent continuity. This starts with the premise that the G0 condition is met and adds to this the fact that the tangent direction of the adjacent surface edges is the same. This has the effect in this case of changing the shape of our transitional surface and you can see that we have a much smoother transition between the body side and the outside edge of the wheel arch. We can check for tangent continuity by using the zebra tools and where the zebras actually run into each other this is indicative of tangent continuity however you'll notice that across the curve edges there is a sharp noticeable kink or change in direction of the zebras and this again is indicative of tangent continuity The next step up from G1 tangent continuity is G2 curvature continuity. This starts with the premise that the G1 continuity is already met and adds to this the fact that as well as the tangent direction of the adjacent surface edges being the same, then the radius of curvature at the edge of the surfaces is also the same. So we have a smoother transition over the surface edges. When we look at this with the zebra tools, we'll see a subtle change in the zebras. What we'll see is that the zebras still run into each other, but we've now lost that sharp kink over the surface edges. We'll still see that there's a quite a quick change in direction here by the shape of the zebras, but you can see that this is now much smoother. When we look at this in terms of the reflective qualities, for example if I add an environment map to this, again we'll see a much smoother result. Sometimes the difference is quite subtle between a curvature continuous match and a tangent match, but we should be able to compare these two and see a slight difference. 
So if I go back to the tangent match, you can see here that as I play across this surface, we can see little areas where we've got quite a noticeable change in surface direction there. So the tangent direction is matched, but the curvature is different. And this represents itself as this slightly harsher highlight. If we look at the same position here and look at this harsh highlight down here with a curvature match, you'll see this is much softer. So as we play across this edge, that transition is much softer. And if we were to use a slightly different reflection here, such as a fluorescent tube for example, then we'd see a bigger difference. Here across the edges is where you can see the bigger difference with the tangent match. So what we actually see on the zebras is something akin to the reflections. Now this reflection map that we're using here, the fluorescent tube, is a very good tool to use to actually uh, check the shape of the blend as we create this. So now we've looked at actually what these basic uh, geometric continuities are, then let's take a look at how we can create surfaces in Rhino whilst matching the tangent. Let's take a look at how we can create these surfaces in Rhino, control the shape and match the edge conditions at the same time. A relatively simple way of creating a transition surface between these two existing surfaces is to use the Blend Surface tool. From the Surface menu we go to Blend Surface. I've got some command line options here which I'm going to leave at default and then I'm going to pick the two edges in question. Then I'm going to enter or right click and I'll get into the preview mode for the tool. So. The Blend Surface tool is an interactive tool. Um, it's slider based, so I can move these sliders to change the end bulge and therefore the shape of the blended surface. And I can also set a different continuity uh, on, for example, Edge 1 than I have on Edge 2. Now, this tool also gives me the ability to use edge matching beyond the G2 curvature matching that we looked at earlier on in the video. So, for example, if I set edge 1 to G3 or flow uh, continuity, you'll see that we get another control point here. And the uh, analogy here is that if you consider the G2 blend on this side, being analogous to a degree 3 surface so that there is a curvature continuous transition across this edge then the G3 match on this side is analogous to a degree 4 surface so there is a constant rate of change of curvature going into the blend and then a G4 match will have a constant rate of change of the rate of change of curvature. So it's analogous to a degree 5 surface. Now the position, tangency and curvature matches can be considered absolute and are measurable. The G3 and the G4 matches can be considered as being aesthetic improvements over the G2 curvature match. So there is not a way in which we can analyze these and say that they are, for example, definitely a G3 or a G4 condition. So the best way to look at these is with the environment map tools. If we go back now to looking at the slider base tools, we can lock both of the sliders together here and control the end bulge of both edges at the same time. With a surface like this we're probably looking to have less of a, an S shape that we would have at the uh, uh, default position of one and maybe more of a sort of a torta surface here. 
Now, when we do this using the slider tools alone, probably what will happen is that we'll get most of the shape right across the majority of the, the blend, but where we have uh, more local shape change going on at the ends, we might actually compromise the shape at the ends by merely using the sliders. So we can also use these handles that we get here and this, uh, these allow us to adjust the shape uh, locally by moving the control points on the handles. Now these handles are set up so that we can uh, move these points without changing the inherent continuity across here. And we can also, should we wish, add more handles uh, along the blend so we can add more local shape change. Now you might want to avoid adding too many of these because the blend shape might become more complex but in this case for example then it would be a, a fairly obvious place to add another handle might be at the top of the blend here. So we do this by adding shapes. Uh, make sure here that we've got the perpendicular snap on. Maybe snap to a mid snap uh, on one edge and then find the perpendicular point on the other edge and snap to that. And this gives us the ability to add another um, handle. We can then, for example, uh, say that against edge 1 we might want to uh, step up the uh, continuity. Uh, and then we can start to play um, a little with the, with the shape change here. So maybe I'll just raise this shape up slightly here and certainly down here maybe give this blend a little more room to to work in so I'll just give this a bit more shape here. Now you may need to do this iteratively by closing the the blend tool um, and then looking at the result with the uh, environment map. One of the things that you'll see with this shape is that when you step up the continuity here from G2 to G3 is that it just means that the, the shape uh, transitions a little better into the side of the wheel arch. Typically things to look out for here is that um, we get a sort of a constant or a fairly good progression of this highlight as we move down the wheel arch here we kind of want to see the same thing going on in the back. Now you can see here that we've got a little bit of trouble going on here where um, the, the surface maybe has got a little bit of a ripple in it here. Um, one of the reasons for this is that we've got a much shorter gap here in which to create the blend than we have here and at the top of the blend. So this is kind of an area that needs work here. Now we could go on and do more with the blend surface tool but Another way that we can do this, and possibly a preferred way, uh, might be to use the two rail sweep tool. The two rail sweep tool will give us a nice taut surface that generally is free from local inflections. Now, um, if we use the two surface edges as the rails, we first of all need to put in some cross sections. And a very useful tool in creating these cross sections is the adjustable curve blend tool. This is found on the curve tools here and it's adjustable curve blend. And for these edges here we can just click on the surface edges and build uh, the appropriate surface blend. Like the blend surface tool, this tool has the ability to match up to G4 and I'm going to pick a G3 uh, match here on the curve that goes into the wheel arch outer and G2 curvature to match to the body side. And again I can adjust these handles whilst the um, tool is live uh, without fear of losing the, uh, the continuity. So I can add another blend here. Let's 
swap the edges around here and this is kind of where I want to just add a little more shape to this blend. It was a little bit too flat before which is why we were getting the the ripple in the surface at the end. Gradually nudge this curve round. We'll take a look at that. If we want to add additional cross sections in the centre here, uh, we can do this fairly easily. Now, uh, it may be helpful here to draw a straight line first of all and take this straight line from, for example, a midpoint to a uh, perpendicular point. Next up, we can use the adjustable curve blend tool again, but this time we can use the edge option and we can pick anywhere on these edges and then slide the blend into position by snapping to the end of the straight line. And then I can go into the appropriate view here and start to adjust the shape of the blend. So with this we want to try and keep this bend quite flat at the top here. Okay, once I've got my cross sections set up, I can then run the two rail sweep tool. Um, pick the two rails, then pick the cross sections. Um, I can match the edges for curvature here. This uh, just because we have the the three curves um, already set up to match for curvature doesn't actually ensure that our edges will match for curvature here. So um, adding this will help to ensure that my edges match um, correctly. Um, there's a maintain height option here on the sweep like there is with a lot of the tools here um, but you can see that in this case it's making a small difference but let's have a look what it's doing down here yeah making a very very small difference here so I'll, I'll leave that off um, for the moment and let's just have a look how this looks Okay, so again, we've got not a bad progression of the highlight here. Let's have a look what happens on the back. Again, the back now is slightly better. You can see how this shape now progresses better, and I think we've lost the, uh, the crease here. You can see that as we go up the wheel arch here, the shape gets tighter here, and then it gradually um, smoothed out here. So we get more definition if you like in this corner here at the top of the wheel arch and then we, we lose that definition as we go down the edges. And This is a way of removing that sort of kink in the surface. So again this may be something of an iterative process uh, in using two rail sweep. Um, but it's a very uh, controllable process and it will give us a very um, taut surface that is free from local um, inflections. It's always helpful to um, look at this in a in a rendered mode as well with a with a reflective material. So I'm just going to match the material of my uh, blend and uh, it's helpful as well to add uh, context to this because then the, the, the shape and the form that you're looking at uh, when you see this uh, in context it all makes um, a lot more sense. 
So use any of the surface analysis tools here until you're happy um, with the result. The idea with these tools, of course, is that we want to create a surface which is not too over complex. Another potential solution is to use network surface. Network surface is generally better suited for surfaces where we have a lot of local shape change and undulation and is less well suited to the type of surface we're trying to create here. If I use exactly the same set of curves that we used for the sweep to rail example, let's have a look what we can do with network surface. So it's surface and curve network and we pick the four boundary curves and then the one interior curve and enter. Now network surface is, uh, allows you where possible to match to um, all the boundary edges but of course we've only got two surfaces here D and B to which we can match uh, curvature continuous and if we preview the surface you'll see unlike the sweep this produces a very complex surface because this fits the edge curves to um, a tolerance um, and although we can slacken off the interior curves here we still end up with a very complex surface and you'll see that if I add another decimal place here and preview that my surface becomes even more dense so I run the risk of not being able to join these edges together and yet still having um, a complex surface. Part of the problem of course of having this complex surface is there's much more chance that we'll get undulations across this surface. We can see this if we go into our environment map and we choose our um, fluorescent tube result you can see here that with exactly the same set of curves that we used to create that quite smooth swept result that here we have particularly around this area here a really nasty looking surface on an average it's not bad around the top here but again when we look closely at this you can see that we've got some issues around here so the fact that network surface produces this dense uh, topology that isn't necessarily that uh, well related to the overall shape means that it's a great surface for things like terrain and objects where we have a lot of local shape change but it's not a good surface solution for something like this where we want to have a simple taut surface that produces a very clean result. Another way of looking at this and particularly if you wanted a single span surface uh, as a result um, of creating the transition surface is to make sure that both of the edges that we're working against here are untrimmed edges and that this cross section and this cross section have the same number of control points. So here we've got an adjustable curve blend that is matched for curvature continuity at each end and we've got surface edges here that are both untrimmed these surfaces are both degree 5 as well with uh, the minimum number of control points um, and so to build a single span surface across here uh, we can use two rail sweep and we can build this and then turn on the simple sweep the simple sweep will if the geometry permits uh, allow us to build um, a surface that has the same number of control points as the rails and the cross sections. In this case uh, it will produce a surface that's degree 5 with six control points in both directions. However when we use simple sweep um, you'll disable the matching options. So for example here when you look at this uh, with an environment map on we'll see that we've lost the matching here. The matching, however, is something that we can recover using the match tools. So we can go to surface and surface edit tools and match and we can hit the multiple match option and we can choose the uh, surface to change which is the um, wheel arch surface that we've just created and the surface to match to which is the body side 
and then enter and then we can select the next surface to change and the next surface to match to and enter and then when we're done with the edges we can enter again to get into the preview mode we can choose curvature continuity and as long as we don't have refine match turned on here we won't add any control points when we create the matchings now because our surface edges um, were already close enough to each other we should be able to actually join the result of this into a watertight condition and we should also have a solution that looks pretty smooth now it uh, should be said that it's quite difficult to produce both of these surfaces as single span surfaces to start off with so this would only be the sort of thing you would do if you were entirely certain that uh, you needed uh, a surface with a minimum number of control points um, here for the wheel arch component so from the solutions that we've looked at perhaps the blend surface solution and the sweep to rail solution uh, are the most appropriate in this case the single span solution probably requires uh, too much effort to produce a surface that uh, is anywhere near as good as the sweep to rail example we have here and the network surface solution uh, simply doesn't produce a surface with the desired uh, continuity so this as I've said is the sweep to rail solution that we looked at earlier on uh, it's a fairly quick and reliable method of creating a good uh, smooth transitional surface. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and please look out for further videos in this series.